I'm also going to present the lab. I didn't make this one like the other guys. I just uh, helped with the sonography and uh, played it. Uh, this is Capo. Uh, the word Capo means a prisoner in charge of other prisoners. Uh, it was used in the German extermination camps during Holocaust. Uh, this is not a fun game like before. Um, it was an abstract prison LARP, exploring the prisoner mindset, and um, here comes the fancy words, the self-perpetuating systems of oppression that follow. This is a fancy way of saying that if people are mean to you, you will in turn be mean to other people, and these ways of being mean will continue along. And that process helps the dehumanization of the prisoners, which means that people will treat other people as less than human, and uh, people will in fact themselves start to think of themselves as worth less than other people uh, around them. The game was held in Copenhagen in uh, 2011. There was a total of 180 players. Uh, the game ran over 48 hours, but not for everyone. And it had two mandatory uh, workshop weekends before uh, the game, on weekends where you had to go and prepare for the game. Uh, during the game, people would enter and leave continually. They were, people could participate in either 12, 24, or the whole 48 hours of the game, depending on what kind of ticket they got. And the idea was that the camp itself would remain the same regardless of the people inside it. The game was held in a black box environment, um, a huge black box built inside an old brewery hall, uh, to create confusing and unpleasant spaces with lots of strange elements. Uh, about one third of the whole play area was flooded with water. Um, there was a strange soundtrack of ambient noise, music, things that cycled the time in six hour loops um, that told you what to do at different times. Um, the lighting was very low and, and dramatic with lots of colors and suddenly spotlights would appear from above. It would be full of junk and the whole thing smelled this horrible wet paint smell that I can still remember and if I get, go into a room with that kind of paint and wetness I will get flashbacks. Um, the mandatory workshops, um, for the longer you played in the game, the, you had to participate in two workshops if you were the whole way through, or one just before the game if you came in later. We used to create the characters and the relationships with each other inside the groups uh, and outside the groups, and especially the social norms and customs of the groups in the game. There were um, four sort of functional groups in the, um, in the LARP that inside the camp that people would, would join. And each of them had their own power structures and ways of oppressing their members in different ways. Some were more physical, some were very mental, and some were just uh, pure meanness. Um, the idea was that each player had more or less the same play experience uh, when they came into the game. Um, first, you would enter through a sensory tunnel that was designed to give you a sort of prime you for the experience of the camp. It was sort of a symbolic representation of being uh, captured and and uh, put through the, the prison guard system and prepared for the camp where you would be blindfolded and dragged through strange rooms and the guards would write numbers on you instead of your names. Um, and after that you would be thrown into this cage inside the camp and there would be all the old prisoners standing around the cage just staring at you as you sat in there. And more people would enter the cage and the prisoners would just stand there staring at you. And when the cage was full there would be a huge amount of noise and screaming from the old prisoners. They would terrify the living shit out of the new ones. They would be completely passive and scared uh, and terrified. And then they would go in one after another and pull out people from the groups, from the loved ones, and claim them for the, for the, for the four groups inside the game. And they would be uh, forced to get new names, new identities. And inside these groups, people would have their individual stories, which was more or less the same one that they would be threatened and harassed and bullied by everyone until they follow, f fell in line and started doing the stuff they were supposed to. We put to work, somehow uh, working inside the camp. One group uh, was tasked with building stuff and repairing stuff, another one with painting, and some had to do experiments on the other ones. And as they worked and was part of the camp, they would start learning the rules and the customs and how uh, they themselves could use these ways of oppressing the other ones to sort of get on top. And in the end, they would be the ones who would push down the new prisoners in order to stay on top and feel a little bit of safety. Um, yes. And once people sort of started feeling good, they would be dragged out again for interrogation. The number would be called on a big screen, sort of telling us, now your end has come. They would walk into the cage where masked guards would 
put uh, black bags over their heads so they couldn't see, put uh, earmuffs on them so they couldn't hear anything, and they had their hand ties behind their back, and then they would be dragged out into, uh, into the uh, outside of the camp with no explanation. And this is where there was the interrogation and torture. And I'm not saying torture in any light way, uh, I'm saying it in the meaning of the Americans, what they used to say is uh, moderate physical pressure. Um, there would be meaningless questioning of people, there would be uh, all the techniques that Americans have used that aren't actually torture, like uh, stress positions, where you would be forced to stand in some uncomfortable position for a very long time until you sort of couldn't stand anymore and then you would be punished for ste stepping down. People would put in rooms with very loud noise, uh, so they would be, get, become disoriented and there would be uh, hosed down with cold water and there would be lots of questioning with, any, with no kind of meaning. And in the end, everyone would admit to being guilty without ever finding out what they were charged with or what their crime was. This, of course, means that player safety had to be taken very seriously. Um, the game was very full of risks. Inside the camp, you wouldn't get enough sleep because uh, the time was weird. The food was, was okay, but there wasn't really enough to go around because people would fight over it. Um, and there was a constant bullying and uh, harassment from the other uh, prisoners that made you very paranoid and scared and you couldn't trust anyone. And uh, there, would be, there would be violence and assaults inside the camp uh, between the prisoners and of course the torture at the end. So people were in very uh, unpleasant places and lots of things could go wrong. Uh, so the, most of the things that uh, Jörg talked about in the safety uh, talk have been tried out at Capo. Um, People got to sort of opt in to the torture in, on th three levels. At the lowest level, people would only shout at you, and that would often be enough for those kind of players. Uh, and in the worst end, people would be uh, put through uh, hose down and forced to undress and uh, blood samples taken from them. Um, so, but that was all optional uh, for what they wanted. Um, inside the camp, because the scenography was so weird and strange, that you were not, weren't allowed to move fast in any way. There was no running or fighting or pretending to fight at any, of any kind. You had to sort of walk slowly uh, at all times. And for the assaults inside the camp, there were replacement techniques. For uh, sexually assaulting another prisoner, uh, there was a perverted version of the Arthur Mandy technique, uh, which sort of replaces sexual touch to the arms. Um, and there was a technique where you could push people down uh, symbolically, if they were being too loud and aggressive, you could sort of push them on the floor and that would silence them. And of course there were safe words. There were safe words uh, in case anything went wrong that people could use. And if all of that still wasn't enough and people needed a break from the game, there was a staffed off-game room just outside where if you walk in at any time, there would be an organizer whose only duty was to be there, give you a big hug and tell you that you're a human being still. Uh, give you some food and maybe a place to sleep uh, if you needed that. And, and after the game, when people came out, there would be an organized debrief where you could sort of talk to other players and share your experiences and find out how you actually felt. Oh, here's my last slide. Now, why would people do this for fun? Why do we pay a lot of money to go stay for 48 hours in a horrible, uh, oppressive prison camp? Well, it wasn't actually fun. Um, about halfway through the game, I wanted to quit. I was hungry, I was so tired I couldn't think, I was uh, wet because I ran into some water to escape some other prisoners, um, and I, everybody was after me. Uh, but I stayed it out, I uh, went into the off-game room, took care of myself as a player and got my energy back, I waited for another player to come in and we started having interesting play that made it fun again. And while I would never ever do this again, I don't ever want to go to a hardcore lab like this uh, in any way, I've tried it now, I did learn some things about myself in these extreme situations and how it must feel. I learned that the mechanics of prisoner mentality and some of the very nasty things people do to each other can come at very short notice. This was only 48 hours and I started doing things that I sort of didn't think I would just naturally do to other people because it was easier and safer for myself. Thank you very much.